Hi, it's Mike here with Yugtastic. I'm sitting down with Avdi Grimm, who runs the Ruby Tapas and the, uh, the the Ruby Rogues and the and the excuse me the Wide Teams uh, blogs and podcasts. Um, he also does this very interesting thing where he inter- he'll remote pair with people uh, on open source projects and and also some paid uh, projects. Avdi, thank you for uh, taking the time to sit down. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how you got started doing these remote pairs and, and how that's been working out for you? Well, thanks for having me. Um, so the, the remote pairing, uh, just, I don't know, it, it, I think it, it seemed like a natural progression, honestly. I had been working remotely for a long time. Um, that's, that's just been sort of one of my long-term intentions was to work from home because I like being around my family. And, um, and I like choosing where I live based on other other things, you know, besides being in a in a tech hub or something like that. So I'm out in sort of suburban Pennsylvania here, and um, so I've been wor- working remotely for a long time for various companies, and um, I am also a fan of pair programming because I've seen how effective it can be for spreading practices throughout a group, um, and you know, and for keeping everyone on the same page and mm-hmm. keeping keeping the bus mu- the the bus number down and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, I, I've I've been so you know the the kind of na- the natural thing was I'd been pairing within companies that I I'd, I'd worked with or for remotely for a long time, and um, at, at 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 one point this summer I found myself with the the opportunity of taking another traditional consulting gig, mm-hmm. but I had been really feeling the pressure. Uh, the pressure on my time from the consulting gigs that I had, uh, I felt like I wasn't able to move forward on some projects that I wanted to get going, like Ruby Tapas. Right. And, uh, and I wanted something that would be more flexible, uh, something that, you know, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be, you know, hours and hours and hours a day, and also where I didn't have to feel like, um, like getting a... You know, like getting getting the the, the product shipped um, was dependent on me working overtime and stuff like that. I wanted to be able to to actually like you know have a good cutoff with the work that I was doing for right. people, um, and that can be hard sometimes. Even with consulting, it can be hard to to sort of draw that you know draw those boundaries. And so I I had I I had already been d- taking some sort of some ad hoc pair programming appointments and mm-hmm. and not as an intentional thing, but just some people had gotten in touch with me. You know, people that I knew from, from, from other things had just said, hey, can I, could we set up a thing where I pay you and we just do remote pairing uh, from time to time? You know, and usually somebody that wasn't, typically people that were, didn't have a, a good, like they weren't in a, a company that had a lot of other Ruby programmers, you know, maybe they were the only programmer, maybe they were consulting, like mm-hmm. a sole consultant for something like that. And they wanted to work with somebody else, you know, to, to just both for the company and, and to hone their skills and stuff like that. And, and so I've been doing that um, for a few people. And I thought, you know, they seem to be getting a lot out of it and coming back. And so what if I just did more of that instead of the traditional consulting? And so I, you know, I took some time to cut, like think about like what would that look like um, you know and, and sort of, and write up some some copy about you know the sort of things that I could I could consult on as a, as a consulting pair programmer and um, and then I just kind of put my shingle out there and I have been you know basically flooded with with requests for appointments ever since oh, okay and um, I mean do you mostly get uh open source projects or do you get a lot of, uh, of, of paid work through this as well? I think I would say, I think I get more submissions for paid work than I, mm-hmm. I get for open, uh, open source work. Now I, I do have to, I, I run a, a backlog for the open source work just because I'm not able to do as many of those appointments. I do those for free. I do free pay, pair programming mm-hmm. if it's, if it's on open source software and, and I'd love to be able to do more than I do, but right now I can only do one a week okay. because it's, um, you know, it doesn't pay the bills. Right. Um, and I'm kind of curious, uh, uh, you know, Gary Bernhard, uh, I interviewed him over SCNA, and he's talked about how doing Destroy All Software, he has people just sending him requests and, and, and saying, you know, can you look at this code, can you an- analyze it, and they kind of have an expectation that he can do all that. Do you get that with the pair program? Do you ever get people saying, hey, why don't you have time for, for my project? Or has it been pretty 
like uh, congenial? What has your been your experience? No, it's 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 I it's been extremely genial. I I uh, anybody who follows me on Twitter, well, first of all, knows that I tweet way too much, but also knows uh, that like somewhere between like you know like once a week or or to once a month, I I tweet the same line over and over again. I get the nicest emails. Yes. Um, and and it's because I do, and I I keep tweeting that because it keeps happening. Um, you know, I honestly the the Ruby community is fantastic, and and I don't know what it is, but but I get you know for the, you know, what I get is is just the nicest things that mm -hmm. people people say, and and I don't really I occasionally I've had people I've had you know I I get a lot of requests for can you give me some advice now I'd say. More often, it's more like career advice right. than it is like, can you fix this code? Okay. Um, but you know, I try to get back to everyone. You know, sometimes I'll say, look, um, I I'm sorry, I I tried to look at this, but I just didn't have time to really dig into it. Right. Um, but for the, but I I know I I wouldn't say I get a ton of people being like, can you you know please fix my code now? Okay. Yeah. Because that was uh <laughs> that was one thing I had to wonder is like how much is uh. A signal to noise do you get on these requests for, you know where somebody like you remember I don't know if you ever looked at old code project or anything like that some of the older code sites where people would go in and basically post um or no it was uh, the guru um sites where can you do my homework for me kind of requests um, I just wondered if you got those kind of things um but uh um the the, the weird every now and then I get like Somebody the, the the most common the, the most common sort of like missing request that kind of misses the target is is I'll get a request that says for an open source pairing session that says I I want some tutoring, okay. you know I, I, I like I want to pass this test and I'd like some tutoring and I have to say look the the open source pairing sessions are really for putting code back into the community. Right. Uh, so like if you have a project that you own or that you want to. Uh, you know, commit to, commit to not commit to, but you know, make some submissions to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's open source. You know, that's that's really what that's for. It's okay. not really about me teaching. Yeah, so it's not uh, really code one hundred one. It's more of you kind of have to have some at least basic uh, experience with programming and be almost there. Just maybe a little bit of guidance or or something that you need. Yeah, I mean, I do a lot of tutoring, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of training and tutoring, but that's pretty much under the the in the context of paid sessions, okay, uh, because you know it's it's I mean it's tiring and it's it takes, um, it takes a lot out out of someone to you know to do that kind of that kind of work and I I kind of look to the open source sessions to be a bit more relaxing, mm -hmm. uh, a bit more you know a bit more fun because hey it's you know it's working open source code right. and that's that's awesome, and so going over to. Uh, uh, some of the more public stuff that you do that's the the Ruby uh, uh, Rogues that's a, a pretty popular podcast I've seen um, uh, Jim Gray is, is trying to really get it elected to the to, to the best podcast of the year he's been tweeting about that a lot but yeah. it, it's always a, a pretty enjoyable interview and um, I matter of fact I listened to your uh, most recent interview uh, at least the first part of it where uh, you guys have this kind of um um, banter, <laughs> uh, and uh, there was something about jokes that can't be made. Uh, Jim uh, Jim Gray, I believe, uh, said something about we can't say these certain types of jokes, and and then immediately somebody made a, a joke about um, back at Jim about you know, the wheelchair or something like that. It was about standing desks, and it was you know only friends can do that kind of thing. Uh, yes, and uh, and and that's really what it sounds like on that podcast. You know. Um, how how did you guys come to start that cast and uh well let let me let me be clear here i i i'm a latecomer to that oh, okay. podcast i'm i'm the most recent addition to that to that group okay um and so as far as i know I, no, so it's it's chuck's podcast you know he he put it together initially and um I actually don't know the details of the early history. I can't remember who exactly was there at the beginning. I know I'm pretty sure it was it was Chuck and um, and James, um, and I'm not sure who else um, at the beginning. I'd have to go back and, and look at some of the early episodes to see. And I know that they you know they added some some folks along the way, and then and for a while there um, before I came on, um, uh, Aaron Patterson was a regular. Okay, and 
uh, you know, which is awesome. But um, I I came on for an episode, um, and then they, you know, I, I didn't, I, I I guess I didn't insult them enough, and 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 they they had me back um, for another episode. And at some point, um, Aaron said decided that he just didn't have time to devote to that podcast every week. And at that point, they, I I basically took Aaron's slot, which which uh, is kind of a big seat to fill. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is tender love. So uh, yeah. Um, well, then I'd like to just jump straight over to the distributed team or the Y team. Excuse me. So uh, apparently you. I, or I should say, not apparently, but it really seems that you do have a passion for remote uh, 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 collaboration. Remote work. Yeah. And, and um, I have not yet listened to the Y teams. I saw it, and it was kind of the day I, that I I decided I had to contact you to talk because I was I was working on Ugtastic and I was not feeling good about something, and I saw an, another Ruby top that said come out, and then I'm like, hmm. Uh, wow! Yeah, he's got Ruby Tapas and uh, and Ruby Rogues, and then there was something you tweeted something about Y teams. I was like, and then I went and looked at your bio. I'm like, this guy is like a uh, between the and the books. I didn't even mention the books. Um, what have you learned through the uh, the, the Y teams, and what kind of was your inspiration for doing that? Well, the inspiration is just you know uh, I work remotely, and I probably always will because I want to live where I want to live with my family and mm-hmm. and and I don't you know so you know my I a few years ago I thought to myself you know what is the best way to to you know I I felt like you know if if I'm going to make a career out of working remotely with other software developers it behooves me to become good at it mm-hmm. and I figured the best way to do that would be to talk to a lot of other people who are doing it and you know pick their brains and, you know, and I also just felt like, you know, when I was looking around back then, I, th- I thought, you know, it didn't seem like there were a lot of good resources out there for, you know, there were a lot of people doing it. And there are a lot of people doing different kinds of, of remote work arrangements, whether fully distributed or just like, you know, there's, you know, a main team and then there's some satellite people or whatever. A lot of these things were going on, but there weren't any resources where they were getting together and talking to each other. And so wide teams has always been, you know, the dream for that has always been to build a community around um, the practice of, of dispersed teams and remote work. So if somebody was going to sit down and grab uh, and, and, and listen to one episode, is there uh, any one particular Whew. interview that you got a lot of wisdom from? Or um, I think I would have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really tough one to answer. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I know a lot of people really enjoyed the Chad Fowler interview, mm-hmm. um, but you know, truth be told, there have been so many good ones. It's well, it's it's hard to narrow it down. Here's the question: Then is it one of the things sitting down with user group people and people involved in the technical communities? I've seen certain patterns that have emerged in the way different people approach the community. Community, uh, have you seen that with uh, the Y teams? Has like been like, oh, I've talked to these twenty, thirty, fifty people. And some patterns have emerged. Has that been something you've? Uh, seen? I think a lot of people are are in fairly similar situations. I mean, you have a lot of startups that that you know they have they have people in them that wanted to work together. You know, maybe they had all worked together at a previous company, but then they went their separate ways in you know different parts of the country or mm-hmm. the world. You know, but they still wanted to work together. You've got some groups like that. You have. Um, more established companies that are just realizing that they don't have enough local talent uh, to fill the slots, you know, that they want to, you know, to, to do the work that they want to get done. And mm-hmm. so they're trying to hire people from wherever the talent is rather than, than uh, just in their local area. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and various things in between there. But um, I mean, those are some of the trends that I see. Okay. And, and just kind of to come to, an, uh, well, I actually have two more questions. One is, I'll just go with the equipment first. Um, I, because I'm, I'm curious as well, and I'm sure other people who are going to be working remotely, I, I'm curious for different reasons. I'm just interested about the setup you use for recording, and I'm, I'm sure you use some of this for your remoting work as well. What kind of uh, microphone and, and stand and setup do you use for uh, for? So for recording, what I'm talking to right now is my, my blue snowball 
which is um, the kind of the I think it's probably one of the most recommended, you know, mm-hmm. podcast recording mics out there for if you don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Um, you know, it's it's USB, which is wonderful because you don't have to worry about like like uh, interference on the analog cables. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's that. My stand is just some cheap stand that I had lying around in in my in my attic. Um, you know, and I've got I've got a, a pop filter that I got along with the mic and. Um, Let's see what else. Um, as far as like remote pairing stuff, um, well, do you want to just know about like audio equipment or, or yeah, equipment yeah. in general? I, I, just uh, what do you use for communications? Do you do you have a yeah. camera open regularly, or do you? I try to have video going, and here's what I do. Let me. I'm going to try to rotate this, and hopefully this won't come tumbling down. Um, if you look over to my right over here, well, one thing you see is a mess. <laughs> uh, but let's see if we can get this far enough over. Uh, let's see. You can just sort of see the corner. There it is. The corner of my tablet, which is mounted on a, uh, a mount, which holds it up in the air. Okay. Uh, to my right. And what I try to do, I try to use my tablet as my primary um, comms device Mm -hmm. uh and it's uh you know so i've got skype and 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 google plus and and uh google talk on it and so i'll try to have the person that i'm working with on my like over here Mm -hmm. um on the tablet and i can look over to them and there's their their face on video assuming we've got a decent enough connection um you know i spring for for business broadband but not everyone has has a good connection and and some, sometimes the internet has bad days but but um you know I have them over here and then I usually have the screen share mm-hmm. that we're working on in front of me on my computer so it's a little bit more natural than like the 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 like staring back at each other kind of setup where you're both um you know where you're using the camera on your work laptop right um thing uh and I I kind of like that it also takes some of the the hardware load off of the the p- PC that I'm working on yeah, and you don't have to worry about a reboot or anything like that. Right. For um, for that, I've been lately. I've been using a um, a VXI uh, uh, Blue Parrot uh, B250 XT Plus, uh, which is a headset. It's a Bluetooth headset that is mainly designed, as I understand it, for truckers. Um, it's got ridiculously long battery life. It's got like 20 hours of of talk time and a uh, and it's got a fairly aggressive um noise control you know for for surround like get, not picking up on surrounding noises yeah that would that would be kind of necessary in a truck they're pretty loud <laughs> yeah but you know it's nice for me because like a lot of the bluetooth headsets out there are they're they're mainly they're oriented towards people making occasional calls they're not oriented towards somebody sitting for you know two four six eight hours at a time mm-hmm. and working with somebody else and, uh, and so that's why i got that and that's been working out pretty well and kind of where i'm gonna end uh the final question is uh, working from home, working remotely, uh, you're disconnected a little bit from um, the banter, the, the chat in, in a normal office. You're more of a person who's on the edge of technology. You don't really, I should say, you know, Ruby and, and, the, and the tools you're using uh, you might not necessarily have to depend on uh, user groups or anything like that for seeing abreast of what's going on. But do you ever go to user groups or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my sort of, you know, home user group, is, I would say, is the Baltimore Be More on Rails group, which I've been going there since their very first meeting, I believe. Okay. Um, and uh, there's also a group up in Harrisburg. Um, and I try to I try to get get to both of those occasionally. I certainly don't get every get down there every month, but mm-hmm. uh, occasionally I try to, to get the, to those. I have a lot of friends at both. And uh, yeah, I, I love users groups and I, uh, you know, it's People, like I said, a lot of t- people write to me asking about like career advice for a young programmer, and that's usually one of the very first things that I stress is get yourself involved in a local users group. Right, and I would appreciate if you put us in touch with them because I I would love to interview them as well, the people who run those groups. Mm. And um, okay, and, and the last but most important question is, do you have a filter for your voice, or is that your own natural? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't have anything going on here. I mean, it's just the mic. 
Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I was going to say, whatever it is, and however much it is, I'm going to buy it because I need that radio <laughs> voice. Um, I mean, or, maybe maybe I have maybe this basement just happens to have good acoustics. <laughs> I don't know. Well, okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, there's the mark. All right, well, yeah, that right. was perfect. 